Adam Kaplan is our NFL insider, and people didn't realize that on the side, he's also one of my physicians uh, ever since my open heart surgery. When I was at the Super Bowl, he did check on me and do some tests, some blood work, and uh, he listened to my heart to make sure that my new uh, cow valves were working and my clamp, and he's done a great job. Whenever my uh, cardiologist is too busy for me, I always turn to Adam Kaplan, and you can turn to him for your NFL skinny Almost three decades covering the NFL. You can follow him on X at Kaplan NFL, and he is very popular and very busy. He's getting ready for his summer tour of training camps. But before we start today on the NFC North, tell me about this story that's now popping about Hertz and uh, don't call me Joe Satriani, Sirianni. Do they have a relationship on the rocks? Okay, a couple things there. First of all, he may, he had. Jalen Hurts had some strange comments when asked in a in, during their OTA program just about how Sirianni's new role uh, on staff because remember they brought in Kellen Moore so it's not Nick Sirianni's offense anymore. Nick gave up the the play calling his first year to Shane Steichen, but it's not going to be his offense anymore. It's not his scheme. It's Kellen Moore's scheme. And Hurts's response was it was just kind of odd and it, it was a big story in in, uh, in Philly on talk radio by the way on both radio stations here. But when you talk about their relationship last season, it was just that Hertz didn't play well. They couldn't get him to play at the level that they wanted him to. And people want to know, what's the issue here? Because remember, it was Sirianni's run last year. Yeah, he's the head coach, but it's his offensive scheme. The same one, by the way, they got to the Super Bowl with uh, in 22. So things kind of dropped off. And it was just a matter of, of, of them being able to reach Hertz and get him to do what they wanted. And he, they couldn't do that. And that's why Sirianni gave up his scheme to Kellen Moore, and it's it's Kellen Moore's run, by the way. But here's another thing: as we move on with this, I know there was the uh, there was that podcast from the Athletic where they were talking about this. But what, what I can tell you is, Kellen Moore now, who's going to call the plays, it's his scheme. He's got to develop a relationship with Hertz here. They got to connect well, because this is a brand new scheme. And Hertz, I think this what I'm told is a little bit of exaggeration, but when he talked about now, the offensive scheme, it's 95% new. It's not really quite that much. But the bottom line is it's different. And Hertz is playing in a variety of schemes going back to his high school days. And his close buddy, Brian Johnson, the former OC, Brian Johnson has known, the, uh, has known Hertz's family since Jalen was in his single digits as a kid. And Johnson was let go. He's now with the commanders in the same division. So there's a, this is a big year for Sirianni and also a big year for Hertz. Well, it sounds like Hertz uh, doesn't like the fact that his longtime friend and coach is gone and he has to uh, listen to a new guy now and a new scheme. And we don't even yep. know how he gets along with Kellen Moore. All right, let's talk about that's very interesting stuff, by the way. I think it's yep. going to uh, that story is not finished yet. We're going to see oh, yeah. how they do. And he's on yep. a hot seat. He's lucky he still has his job after the way they played at the end of the season, Sirianni. Let's talk about the NFC North. Start with the Lions. All right, so this division, all of a sudden, Scott, all of a sudden is the hot division. Yes, the AFC North is the best, but all of a sudden we're going to get to the Bears. They're, they're one of these sexy teams, but it starts with the Lions. Now, their win total is 10.5. The over is minus 135. The under is 110. To win the division is plus. They're plus 150. Now, you and I have talked about the Packers before, how much I like the Packers, but over 10.5, I hate to use the word lock. you got to love that, folks. They're, they're going to be, they're, if all their key players are healthy, they're easily going to get over 10 and a half. So 11 wins or, or more. Cl clearly, uh, the over is the play at minus 135. The big story here with the Lions is Ben Johnson is back. I'll admit it. I didn't think that could happen. The commanders wanted to hire him. It didn't work out. So they hired Dan Quinn. But Ben Johnson's back. Pretty much everybody's back. Aaron Glenn's back as a defense coordinator. He's done a good job. And they've addressed. There are problems on defense with two corners, Carlton Davis in the trade from Tampa, and Terry on Arnold, their first-round pick out of Alabama. The only issue for them, and why I do believe the Niners will get to the Super Bowl over them, is because I don't think their pass rush is going to be good enough. Other than that, it's a phenomenal football team, really good roster. Love that over 10 and a half. They should have gone to the Super Bowl the way they blew that game against the Niners. I'm yep. still sick to my stomach over it. Uh, what a no choke job that was. That was almost yep. not as bad as the Falcons in the Super Bowl, but the next best thing. How about the Packers? Everyone loves them, including you. Oh, I can't believe their win total is not 10. It's nine and a half. The over is minus 135. The under is plus 115. 
to win the division is plus 210. I like that number. You look at their offense. You got Josh Jacobs, who's an upgrade at running back. Aaron Jones is explosive, but he needs to be in a two-back system. Josh Jacobs is going to be that man. I know Jacobs didn't play well last season. Remember, he had the holdout. The timing was off with him. And their head coach with the Raiders and their play caller, Josh McDaniels, was fired midstream. That screwed up everything. Josh Jacobs now has got a big salary. He's going to be the man. Now, defensively, they're going to have a new scheme. And I like this one. I really like this one. It's going to be a 43, but they're going to, as I was told by a player recently of the Packers, they're going to do some good disguise. The, the, the edge rushers are going to stand up a little bit. It's going to look a little different than the 34 front that they run under uh, Barry there, John, uh, Barry, who, uh, who's gone, who, who's moved on. But the bottom line is this is a really good football team, well-coached in offense, deepest receiver core in football, and Joe Barry's no longer there. I like Jeff Halfley who's going to run their defense. I like this thing. They're going to push the lines to the limit. I love the over 9.5 at minus 135. So the back end at, at safety and corners uh, is not a concern at all because I think their offense is stacked. Their quarterback's yep. a badass. They got Jacobs. I'm not worried about their offense. I'm not worried about their coaching. I am question mark on their uh, back end. Yes, opposite Jair Alexander, who, by the way, didn't play well last season, but that Dallas game, he was phenomenal where they blew out the Cowboys on the road. Yeah, they're not good at corner opposite them, but now, I like the safety group, which was not good last season. They brought in Xavier McKinney, $17 million a year. I love that move. And Javon Bullard, one of the best safeties in this draft, out of Georgia in the second round. So the cornerback position, they're not real deep. That, to me, is a concern. All right, so uh, I want to hear your thoughts on this Bears team that's getting so much hype. It's not even funny. I don't believe for one minute they're going to live up to it. Not only do I not believe they're going to live up to it, all this talk about Eberflus being the coach of the year and – and yep. everything else, I, I can't even take it. Eight and a half. Listen to this. Their their win total is eight and a half. Is minus one sixty five on the over. Everyone's hammering that over. You and I are seeing this the same. The under is plus one forty to win a division. It's only plus two sixty five. Brand new scheme here under Shane Waldron, who did a great job of developing Geno Smith into a competent starting quarterback for two seasons. And then when you look at it, the run game, DeAndre Swift is going to be there. They're going to spread things out. They're absolutely loaded receiver. It's defensively, they're not going to have much of a pass rush. Montez Sweat, who's a decent pass rusher, they extended his contract at the time of the trade from Washington. Love their back seven. Don't like their D-line, don't like their D-line at all, to be honest with you. Uh, they'll be a nice team, eight or nine wins. I think that over is crazy at minus 165 at eight and a half. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I'm not buying it, and I'll believe it when I see it. I think yep. it's still going to be difficult for Williams uh, they were not a good team. They haven't been a good team. All they do is lose. It's been going on forever. And now everyone thinks because they got him that it's going to flip like a pancake. I am not buying that. All right. The Vikings, another question mark, but at least Jefferson's loaded. Yeah, they had been the darling of the division for years. And then, unfortunately, Kirk Cousins shares his Achilles. Their season goes down in the tank. They went through a spate of quarterbacks. Now you look at it. J.J. McCarthy, the first-round pick right now. They think Darnold will be ready to start week one, but I'm not going there yet. Sam Darnold is a journeyman. He has trouble processing, decent athlete. Like people around him love him because he's tough. But in the end, Jelly gets replaced. And J.J. McCarthy was their first round pick. They had a chance to trade up for him. They didn't. They got him. He was their man, their win total, because nobody's on them at all. It's six and a half. The over is minus 150. The under is plus 125. The win in division, plus 1,000. Scott, nobody into them at all, and I agree with that. That's one where I agree with the odds makers. Six and a half, nah, they might get seven, but to me, I actually like the under more at plus 125. 